And the end of a tape. I'm saying to you, how are you doing in my language? How's the world treating you? It's probably the broader term. And if the world is treating you okay, which it always is, rain, snow, earthquakes, fire, whatever, that's what humans are made for, to handle the world as it is. So when I say, in the end of a tea, you say sotan. That means I'm managing. Uh, not too shabby. This is how my grandmother explained it. She said, so when somebody say that to you, it's just like saying, it's okay, I'm handling my life. So I want to really thank uh, Odawa to invite me here. Thank Al for making sure that some of these stories are being recorded for the program that you people are a part of. I was thinking on my way in, it's hot, it's going into the hot period now of summer. And I remember hearing this uh, story, it's from Alaska, from the Dene of Alaska. And um, they say that this story inspired people to play the fiddle. I was kind of interested, they said it's about how bugs inspired people to play fiddle. Yeah, so it's, I don't know if it's heard in these parts, but. Mm hmm. Well, years ago, when many of these stories took place, uh, you know, ants are always busy. You usually hear the term busy as a bee, but ants are super busy. And they work as huge teams. You know, they're they're just busy from morning to night. In the summer, there, everybody is busy. Everybody is gathering food, making nests, uh, calling their mates, these kind of things. In the hot of summer, people are also gathering food finding mates, maybe, at a powwow or somewhere, <laughs> looking around in the summer. That's what summers are for. Hot, long, long days in Alaska. This is where this story comes from, in the Dene people. And for those that do not know, many of the Dene people, the Guchin people, they play the fiddle. And they play it well. I think a lot of the Cree people, too, northern Quebec, Play the fiddle well. So the story goes like this that ants, they're up before the crack of dawn, they get a little bit to eat, and then head out. Teams going here, going there, getting food. They have lions and lions going back to their nest, putting away, storing food for the winter. And one day, this brother, two brothers, they were on the same team. And he said to his brother, you hear something? He listened. He said, what, what do you hear? Does it sound like music? And that one little ant, I never saw an ant hear, but you know, they can hear. They have very good eyes. So maybe they have little tiny ears. I don't know. And that one ant said, yeah, I hear something like music. So anyway, they finished their job, you know, and then they went back to where that song was coming from earlier in the day. They went back there. And as they got closer, the music started to get more lively and they could hear it louder. Oh, those little ants, they're tired, but they want to check it out. So they walked over. And there was the fiddle player. It was Grasshopper. Ho! Oh, he was playing his fiddle with his back leg. Dee, 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 dee. Just having a good time. 
And the aunt sat down there, listened to a couple songs, eh? and they said, "Oh, grasshopper, you sure play your fi you play your fiddle all day." He said, "Oh yeah, you don't gather food for winter. Oh, tch. summer is for enjoying." He said, "Not for working." Of course, the ants are programmed differently. He said, "Okay, that's what your people do. We honor that. We respect that." Grasshopper, yeah, that's what summers are for. Okay, I'm gonna enjoy my life in the summer. So ants went home. They said, "I wonder what he does in the winter. Maybe he just depends on his family." They're, they're trying to figure out, you know, how does the grasshopper exist? So. As it was, their program, they get up in the morning, have a little bit to eat, and then all the ants just fan out like this. Teams gathering food, bringing it back. They say hello to each other once in a while. Maybe you have a little break, have a little something to eat, some of the stuff that they gathered. Again, the one little guy, their little ant, he said to his brother, you hear that guy playing music again? He said, yeah. After we finish, let's, let's go listen. Okay. So that's what they did. They finished all their work, whipped the sweat off their brow, drink some water, head towards that beautiful sound of the fiddle. He was playing some sort of sweet lament, too, eh, with his back leg. <laughs> well, some of the other ants knew this was going on. So they started to gather, too after work, just before dark, playing the fiddle. Oh, they just enjoy so much. All the leaves started falling. The ants had a little bit more difficult time to gather, to gather their food. They're having a little bit of trouble, but they, they continue gathering their food. Go listen to grasshopper. All the leaves fell. Ooh, that little chill in the morning. They're starting to feel it. And the day they went there, when the first frost hit, Grasshopper was playing very slowly. It's like he's getting ready for winter. Maybe he's going to sleep for the winter. And the ant said, Grasshopper, what you going to do this winter? He said, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> they were so surprised. What? He said, I'll probably manage okay. Well, his little buddies there, they're, they're worried about him, and I think the whole tribe of ants was worried about him too. Anyway, those two brothers, they talked about it. The next time they went there, he had these little gloves on it. Eh? His little gloves, his little fingers that it cut off. He's playing his fiddle. He's got a little scarf around too. Can you see his breath coming out? He's playing very slowly because his legs are starting to get stiff from the cold. So that one ant, he spoke up. Grasshopper, he said, we're going to ask Chief if it's okay if you come into our den, if you come in, and you can entertain us all winter. How does that sound? We'll feed you too. And he said, that sounds really good. So he got hopeful. So those two brothers, they went, hey, chief, they said, we met a very fine musician this summer. In fact, all of us, every day after work, we go listen. He's got lots of tunes, lots of them, slow ones, not so fast ones, fast ones, jigging ones, waltzing ones. Oh. So they convinced the chief. The chief said, sounds like you've got a pretty good friend. Yeah. All right. That sounds good, because winter's long and cold and dark, and this will lift the spirits of the people. 
So they went and they told Grasshopper, oh boy, Grasshopper, you look so relieved. Oh, thank you, my brothers, he said. Thank you. So they went over to the den. But they didn't realize, you know, the hole in the den is for an ant, not a grasshopper with a fiddle. So they tried to put his little head in there and they said, maybe if you just wiggle yourself like that, the hole will get bigger. Mm -mm. Okay, pass the fiddle. So they passed the fiddle in. It worked okay. And they said, when you, how about if you turn around because your legs and the back seem stronger. So that's what he did. He turned around. He put his legs just as if he was playing the fiddle. Well, he made the hole a little bit bigger. But he was still pretty tight. So he came out. The other brother went inside. A couple other people helping. People in the back. Ant people I'm talking about from the ant tribe. They're pushing, pulling, pushing, pulling, came in. Wow, he was impressed. It was a nice space. In fact, great space for playing the fiddle. Had nice little walls around it. Had nice storage of food everywhere, keeping the sound close. He was thinking about all of these things. Then he looked over by the door. He saw two old ladies. They had a scarf on it. One was smoking pipe. They heard about the grasshopper coming in. Musician. Smoked that pipe like this. Grasshopper looked at him. Hmm. So he settled in. They went about their business, then they had a meal together, everybody's full up. So the chief said, before everybody go to sleep for the evening, we're going to hear some music. Got everybody together. If you feel like dancing, do so. So that grasshopper got up there, he gave his, he gave his all best. He played the fiddle like nobody ever played the fiddle in the grasshopper tribe, ever. To make a statement, you know, like to make them all really like him. He did this for two nights. You know those two old ladies there, two, two grandmas there? Oh boy, that one said to the other one, and just within earshot too of the grasshopper, I think I want to marry that guy. <laughs> and the grasshopper was like, oh gosh, he didn't know what to say. He got really nervous. And he kind of, the next night, you know, he's supposed to play again. He came and he played again, but he went right back to his little place where he's a little sleeping place. And he went back there. Usually he, he would come and hang around. Finally, those two brothers that went there said, Grasshopper, you're not feeling well? How come you don't sit around and drink tea after you play your music? Meet the people. He goes, I guess, you see those two old ladies there? One of them said she want to marry me. I'm grasshopper, you know. I can't marry aunt, aunt woman. Oh my God, those brothers, they laughed. They laughed so hard. Ah, they just tease you. They don't want to marry grasshopper. You're only here to play music. Don't worry. So that's his story about this beautiful relationship between ants and grasshopper and how the grasshopper didn't have to marry one of those old women. And also how everything in nature is connected. That's his story. <laughs> I think maybe one of you might have heard this story before, but it's worth telling. I was telling Ruth, as I tell little funny stories. Sometimes I have to tell myself, don't tell always serious stories. Humor is the best medicine. If you can lift somebody's spirit, you know, make them laugh, make them feel good. 
make them laugh at themselves. Because that's what a lot of these stories are. You are in the story. Like all of us were in that little ant's den. We were there in thinking about the fiddle music we heard in our lives, right? So this story, I'm going to tell. I usually show a picture of wolf and wolverine. They're cousins, you know. They used to pack together. <clears throat> so wolf and wolverine, they're related way back. They used to pack together, you know. They go trapping together, they hunt together. You know, they're friends. Wolf, he's a little bit more dignified. And Wolverine is sometimes goofy, nasty, but they got along good. Cousins, you know. Sometimes you're so different, but you just love your cousin. So this one time they're out in the springtime when the ice is melting on the river. Usually people only travel at night because the river is still frozen. So they travel by moonlight. That's what these two fellas did. Ice is nice and solid. But during the time in the day, their feet, are, because there's a little bit of overflow still on the river, their moccasins got wet. Get wet in the spring. So Wolf says to Wolverine, hey, cuz, I think we should make camp now. He said, I, I'm getting cold from all this icy water Cold moccasin, you know. Let's make camp here. Let's make brush camp. So they went up on a bank. Start a fire. Wolf, he's got some rope in his pack sack, and he put a little rope like that near the fire. He took off his moccasin, eh? Wring it out really good. Take all the water out until it's almost dry. He turned inside out. He hang it over nice. His mitts too a little bit wet, so he wring it out really nice. He put it there. His pants, he changed his pants. They always got change of clothes in their pack. Dry moccasin, dry pants, dry mitts. Because if you're wet in a cold country, you get cold, danger. You could freeze your feet, your hands. So you always have to keep dry clothes as a hunter. They both had dry clothes. So, Wolf put up that little line, put his stuff up there really nice. Well, Wolverine, he took off his moccasin, hardly wring it out, eh? He just strolled over the line, just dripping wet. He's like that, eh? His pants, too. He didn't even turn it inside out. He just wring a little bit, throw it over. He's hungry. He don't, he's not worried about his moccasin and his pants, his mitts. So Wolf saw that, but he accepted this, this way of being of his cousin. Eh? That's his business. So he made a nice dinner. He sat around a the fire there, drink tea. Wolverine, he's tired, had a big burp. I think I'm going to sleep, he said. So he lay down there. Wolf lay down the side. Now I should tell you, Wolverine always try to find one way to trick Wolf. He played tricks on him all the time. Trip him up, eh? Wolf is aware of this. He knows he got to watch out for his cousin. He's going to play a trick on him. So he went to sleep. They both went to sleep. On that fire is Going down, wolf got cold. He jump up, stir up the fire a little bit, put more wood in. He saw his clothes nice and dry, his moccasin, his mitts, his pants, everything nice and dry. So what did he do? He trade places. He even wrung out his cousin's moccasin nicely, turned it inside out, and he hung it where his was. Went back to sleep. 
snoring away. He snored so loud he woke up Wolverine. Wolverine. He's going to play a trick on his cousin. So he jump up. Harry grabbed those first marvels and there he's showing up. Wolf, he said, get up, cousin, cousin, look, wind blow your moccasin right in his fire. He said, oh boy, Wolf, just jump up really fast. He threw the moccasin out like that. He look at Wolverine. That's not my moccasin, he said. That's your moccasin. He said, I got up in the night, he said, I, I traded all around. Look, he said, that's not my wife, so on. He, he proved it to him, he said. Oh, Rin, that's the last trick you're ever going to play on me. So ever since that, Wolverine, Wolf, they don't travel together. And that's the story.